And welcome to the Diva Interviews. How exciting this is. We are coming to you live tonight. Now, I know that this is the second of the Diva Interviews that we have had. And I just want to give a quick shout out to my on-stage cyber wife. She won't mind me calling her that. Um, but her girlfriend might, however, thanks to social distancing, she can't get me. So for now, I'd like to give a big shout out to Shaw Bailey, who hosted our first of the Diva Interviews last week and she was also interviewing the fabulous Melanie Ricky, our fashionista sister who will also be doing some interviews with us so if you've got some uh, questions about your fashion and what you would like to wear then she is the girl to ask. Now today is very exciting for me because not only have I got one guest but I have got two guests, two fabulous guests and talking of fashion I think it's quite obvious here and, and, and quite interesting, and I would like to say actually that we've all got very good taste, that we've all just turned up live on this Zoom meeting pretty much wearing the same outfit. <laughs> so without further ado, I would like to introduce two of the stars of the new film, Cocoon, that has also premiered earlier tonight, so I know many of you on the Diva community have been watching it, but people please welcome Jella Haza and Lena Klenka. Ladies, how are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for having us. No worries, thank you, thank you. And thank you for looking so sharp because that means I look good too. So I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> into that. <laughs> um, now, as I said earlier, the, um, oh look, there's the first, there's the first tech hiccup that the phone's gone off. Uh, that's, that's probably my agent now telling me you know, stop, stop talking about the fact that you're wearing the same clothes. Uh, but what I'd like to say is that the film went, it premiered live as well earlier, that uh, many of people from our Diva community got to watch the movie. Uh, and we've had such a, a great response. Um, I saw the film myself over at the weekend. Um, I loved it, obviously. But actually what I thought was really, what, what I really loved about it is how relatable it was. Now, even though it's kind of like a love story, and you know, it's a it's it's a lesbian love story between two young teens, but that's not really the main focus of the film, is it? And I think what's great about that is that you can relate to it as a teenager on so many different levels, um, which is what I loved. Um, for me, I'll just say having those feelings as a young lesbian teen, not knowing what the hell to do with, with them, uh, having the party animal sister. Uh, just like yourself, <laughs> Lena, um, and also having that love, that summer love where you finally found someone who's willing to kiss you back, and uh, and then they break your heart. That's not good. So I could relate to it on many levels. But let's talk a bit more about it and delve into it. Tell us first, how did you get involved in the film Cocoon, uh, Lena? Uh, for me, it was pretty classical. I just went to a casting uh, in Berlin where Leonie invited me and then we just spoke about the book. I already read it before and I loved it. So I was really keen to meet her and to talk about it. And then the other Lena who plays um, Nora was already also in the casting. And then we just rehearsed like, I think three or four scenes together. And it was a lot of fun. And then we talked more and then I just really hoped to get the role. And then Leonie called me. And then her only concern was that I look too old because my role in the movie is like 15. And then I told her that it's not a problem because everyone always tells me I look younger. And then we even put the braces on so I look more younger. And then we did a lot with the costume. And then, yeah, it all started. Ah. <laughs> oh, so you had to like wear like braces throughout the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I had to like click them in every day and couldn't eat or drink anything with it. So it was really like feeling back, like being a, TJ, a teenager when you have to like wear all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, and the food stuck in them because you just don't, you don't know how to yeah, clean them. The time. And you kind of have a little lisp because there's something that's always hitting your teeth. Yeah, exactly. And what about you, Yeah, What about yourself? Did you, um, what, how did you get involved in the film? Um, so I know Leonie from a movie we did together before. It was also kind of, no, actually it was a love story about three women meeting in a psych, how do you say, Lena, psych, uh, psychiatry? Psychiatric, psychiatric hospital? Is it maybe okay. a way? 
and oh. they fall in love uh, with, which, uh, with each other, other. So I knew Leonie from a movie before, but still I had to go to the casting because Leonie is, yeah, she, she's very clear and um, I had to, yeah, we, the chemistry needed to be perfectly somehow. And so she had to test it, whether it would function between Lena and me, the love. And mm. um, yeah, then I could convince her. And you clearly did. You did a very good job of it. Did you feel, both of you, did you feel quite instantly connected to your characters? Was it quite easy to kind of relate to them or just get into character in general? Um, for me, I mean, I don't like, I could relate to the feelings of Yule of being like kind of the last teenager and not knowing where to belong and not getting along with your parents, but also really loving them and then being annoyed by your sister, but also loving her. So I could relate to this, but I'm, I think apart from that, I'm a lot different to her, but it was really fun to get into like the kind of loud girl that's always in a clique and that's like always doing crazy stuff. So I really loved to connect like the parts I already knew and the parts that were so far away from me and to kind of like put them together with Leonie and like we wrote a whole biography for Yule and like what she likes, what music she listens to, how she acts. So that was really cool. Yeah. And what about yourself, Jella? Did you, did you find it quite easy instant connection or how was your journey with the character? Yeah. So sometimes, I'd like to be even more like Romy because I think she has somehow this wisdom of youth, you know, and um, she's a very gently and calm character. But in the end, she's also just a young human being who wants to be loved. And um, yeah, I, I, somehow I can deeply relate to her. I think she's not running away from something which is very healthy in a way. She has this, I don't know, this um, trust in life. And sometimes I wish more to be like her. Yeah, well, I, I totally, I hear you on that, right? And, and this is what I think about both your characters because they were both confident characters, but actually from very different ends of the spectrum, I felt they came across in the, in the film. So as an example, uh, Romy's character was confident. Uh, you know, she, she, she didn't care what other people really thought about her. She dressed how she wanted to dress. You know, she wore the clothes, she said how, how it was. And she was just cool in that respect. She just did what she felt, you know, how she, things she wanted to do. Whereas, um, you know, Yule's character is, is very much, was the cool kid in school but then you saw behind the scenes you know that she was uh, often watching the youtube videos about her weight and concerned about how she looked and trying to fit in with that which actually takes up so much more kind of time and energy um you know and and again that's where that i think relatability for a lot of young people uh, have that was it important to you both uh, within your characters that you've got that across to show those differences in, in you know how maybe how hard it can be sometimes even if you are fitting in yeah and I think all these characters all, as well the boys and all these characters the parents everyone in this movie have this um, natural vulnerability and this is this comes very much from Leonie and from Leonie from Leonie's perspective and her her view of people and um, yeah and you could think that this natural vulnerability makes the characters more weak but it's actually the other way around it makes them more strong in the end which is really interesting I think yeah absolutely absolutely uh, and what about you Lena how did you feel um, that came across for your character in that role relating to it I mean, as Yella said, I think the main thing Leonie already did with writing the book, like the first time I read it, there was already everything in it and you could relate to every single character. So then it was just up to us to kind of bring that into ourselves. And then Leonie helped us with that so much because we rehearsed everything and she really 
yeah, she really wanted to get in our heads and into the character's heads. And by that, she like made something open in us. And then we were already so vulnerable that it was just so easy to play, which was so beautiful because that's not always the case in a movie where you have to like constantly create that. And what Leonie did, she did that already in the beginning. And then we could just work with that every day on set. So yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, I mean, Leonie, uh, the director, she, she clearly put her heart and soul into the movie. And then again, I think that in itself comes across, you know, uh, even with the way, it's, the way it's shot, where it's shot and something, we'll talk a bit more about that, that later. But I guess with that heartfelt, you know, that passion that comes from not just the director and you as, you know, you as actors and the characters, what was your response from any of your younger fans watching the movies? Again, it's with that relatability to, to your characters. Yeah, I think the most beautiful response we had when we premiered at the Berlinale um, in the beginning of the year, because we premiered in the section um, generation, which is already like for younger people. And then there was a cinema full of younger, but also older people, but just, it was full house and then they were like we were in the middle of it during the movie you could like feel them going with every single scene and then they had so many questions afterwards and they were all so touched um so yeah that was for me the most beautiful experience um to see how it connects to people and even like young men had so many amazing questions and thoughts and like I think a lot of them saw things they never even thought about. So yeah, that was really amazing. And I think, um, which what also touched the people very much was the end. And that it's not uh, like a happy end, a cliche, and uh, the love finds the love and then they're happy together. But it's about um, a young girl who's learning to move on no matter what happens and who is yeah exploring herself and um still finding herself yeah finding she herself in the end. Such a process yeah and that's it i mean and again that's why i think what makes what makes the film so great because there's that on so many levels you can can relate to it and it isn't just about the sort of the lesbian love um part of the story it's literally about these are the experiences that yeah. you know they shape us as we grow and you know you meet people and they have like an impact on your life whether it's positive and negative and it's all those those learning curves isn't it as, as you kind of grow and, and again you know as you, you you kind of that coming of age and the realization um in fact actually at the end of the film what i love is the, is the part just where nora is just casually walking with a nice lolly you know <laughs> she's just like yeah well that yeah. happened it is what it is, um, you know, it is what it is, and, and here, here we find ourselves. Um, have you had much of a reaction from, from LGBT youth, though, on that, on that perspective? Uh, I guess maybe that question go, goes out to you, Gela, because, you know, the whole, um, the whole idea around the love story being two young girls, um, have you had any sort of people maybe coming out, you know, often we hear people come right to their characters or their actors and say, oh, you know, I saw the movie and this is... You know, been the effects on me. Has, has anything like that happened? To I you? think not, not specific, but um, yeah, I think as Lena said, that people from all uh, from all ages and from all diversity, uh, they were all touched because yeah, I think what connected them all was this experience of a big first time, first time of alcohol first time of falling in love first time of getting the period and that what yeah that no not not in a specific way to to um yeah to answer the question i mean it's also hard right now because in germany the movie came out um when there were only so few people allowed to be in the cinema and then they were closed right after again so the movie was supposed to travel so much like all over the world leonie and the other lena were supposed to go to so many places and nothing really happened so you can't really get in contact to people because i think the most amazing reactions you have when you meet them in person right after the movie 
and that didn't really happen. But uh, mm. the, the, uh, people came up with very interesting questions. So there was a woman after we premiered at Berlinale and she came to me and asked me, Yella has a stop. Would you ever um, wash out the blood from a stranger, from, from a strange person, you know, from, from, from another, from a girl you don't know? And I was just like, wow, what a question. And I had really to think about it, but I wish that this movie maybe leads us in a way to do things like this and to create a bigger tolerance of all these topics. I like yeah, it. it's true. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's an interesting question for someone to come up and ask you, but I guess really, I, I, I suppose you can be fair to say in the film at the time of that scene, how many people may have gone, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. But you're right. Because really, it's like, you know, sometimes it's just people are supporting other people and that may well have happened in a situation, you know, it's just, but I guess this is where people's minds go when they see certain, <laughs> certain scenes, right? But um, I guess as well, coming back to the whole, you know, lockdowns obviously affected everybody and it's just put a massive stop on such, you know, everything. I mean, th thankfully that, you know, Uh, the films can still be streamed live um, so people can, can connect on and watch them there but uh, I'm confident whoever watches this film and can wherever I, to watch can it. I ask a question uh, yeah. how, how is it how is it in in England now or um, so how will be our movie shown there how can people can they sc uh, sc uh, screen it actually C can they watch it in, in the it's going to be uh, released on Friday Mm -hmm. uh, I believe, and it's going to be in cinemas and on demand, so people will be able to uh, to watch it. So yeah, the powers of technology. So you might not have to wear a mask on your on your sofa. So that that, that helps. <laughs> Uh, we had a really good reaction from uh, our diva community, though, and people who have watched it uh, where it streamed live before we went live uh, this evening. So, uh, you know, that in itself says a lot. And we've got a big diva community, which is up to, I think, 8,000 people now. So that in itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And either way, either way, listen, I'm your biggest fan. I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> so what I wanted to ask as well is because um, I know, again, the only the director, uh, I've seen her talking in interviews as well, and she talked about the fact that the film, um, there was, you know, on a very tight budget, And often there may have been situations where you literally had one opportunity to, 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 to make the film, you know, to do a scene and, and that's the final cut. Uh, when you're under that um, kind of pressure, <laughs> what's, you know, what sort of tips would you maybe give to budding actors out there who are, you know, in those situations where it's like, I've, I've got one take, the director is not going to allow this to happen again. I mean, how do you prepare for it? I think well, the first thing is don't think about that. Don't ever think about that. And I mean, I think during, while we shot the movie, it was always a little bit stressful or it wasn't like the easiest movie to shoot. But it was also so familiar because um, we had such a small team and everyone was doing everything. And like everyone was always doing everything to make things happen so it was also really cool to just be so involved and like not sit around wait wait for five hours and then do like one scene no we were always into everything so there was a different energy and then we always knew that Leonie was trying to make everything possible to make it the best um, and then I think it was also really good that we rehearsed so, so much before like almost the entire movie so that Leonie could literally say, oh, we're doing this scene now that was planned for like, I don't know, next week. And you weren't stressed out because we were so into our characters and what was going to happen that for me, it was, it was actually fun to just fall into the scenes and maybe just see how the surrounding is and not get stressed out about maybe the fact that light is running away or that we only have 10 minutes or something. And uh, Leonie, so so first of all, yeah, totally, I agree with Lena. But um, Leonie also has a talent of making her actors feeling comfortable because she's very 
a very calm person and um, you or I trust her so much and so honestly in a way that I can that I know if Leonie's next to me she will know what is right for the scene you know she's yeah a really special director do you feel that um we've got some questions i believe that are coming up as well but do you feel that um you know with that that helped you have that connection because on screen like i said earlier it, it really comes across as if you've known each other for years even though you're obviously you're actors so that's part of your job uh, but you know it, it really does you know come across well did it help you having that sort of close-knit set and and crew help you sort of get into character and, and feel you could relate to it easily the normal on set yeah and also to like rehearse before we did rehearsals just the other lena and me kind of as a family then with um the actress who played our mother and then also with the guys um who were mostly street casted they never played in a movie before so yeah we just spend time before and like asked questions and really get to know each other and then just every day we could like kind of fall into what was happening without being too stressed about our surroundings which then i think pays off um because you can really see that the people already have a connection did you do you know each other outside of like in your, in your acting circle or in your because I know you're both from Berlin as well but do you did you know each other prior Anyone yeah we know? we shot a movie actually um three movies three movies um the first one like six years ago seven seven years ago yeah so we we've known each other and we we've spent yeah we shot one movie in Thailand together so there has been has been some time and for me Yella is like a bigger sister. Oh. Oh, wow. that is well, oh. <laughs> let her enjoy let Yella enjoy that moment. Oh. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We have, we have some emoji hearts that around you. We'll do some yeah, editing. Wait, I, can, I, can I remember exactly the day I, I I first read the script of Leonie. And I saw Yella that day and I told her about it. And she's like, yeah, I know, Leonie, I shot another movie with her. And then I really hoped that we would both play in the movie together, even though we don't have any scenes together. But still, it was such an amazing connection. And as we said, like, Leonie's such an yeah. amazing director. And for me also, the, the um, story um, from uh, the story about the sisters, it touched me so deeply. And I think, Lena, you played it so it was so it was a joy to watch you and every time you was crying so badly i have to cry as well because it's so so moving oh there's i'm really feeling the love now here on zoom it's really yes. you know <laughs> and is this what you both do in interviews you wear the same outfit you spread the love across live air <laughs> Now you've got a time. It's our theme. We've rehearsed this before. Yeah. <laughs> now, to, to be honest, I um I also had the pleasure of interviewing um uh, Lena Zandowski, uh, who plays Nora in the um in the in the movie, and she she gives you just as much love back as well. Yeah. And she said it was just a real pleasure to be part of the crew and cast, and you know. So again, that whole sense of that community within your crew, it, it's. It makes a big difference, doesn't it? Um, you know, especially when you've got one scene opportunity. <laughs> so do that. But again, like, there's so many films that kind of explore that coming of age sort of, you know, um, storyline. I mean, what do you think, Cocoon, how does that differ from other movies, would you say? Yeah. Well, as I said, there's this natural vulnerability of all these characters and, um, yeah, there is Leonie's really honest view about youth and it's about the mystery of youth and the wisdom of youth somehow and um, it's free from cliches, you know, I, I don't know, it's, phew, it's a bit difficult to... I think it's just like an, an excerpt from life, like kind of like yeah. you've taken out things 
with framing normal daily life and that is so rare in movies because of course you always want to create special moments and everything is always a little bit over the top but I think with that movie it's just so beautiful to see these girls living and growing up and then especially in the scenery in Berlin um, where I think people who are from that city and from that area can also relate so much because it's it's really like that in the summer in Berlin. Like it's so hot and you can't really stand it, but you're still always everywhere and like go to like these not pretty places. And it's, it's I don't know, I think it's it's really nice to just see things you can connect to and so many different people can connect to because it's, it has such a big um, like spectrum. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? And the, the way the film shot and obviously the location, I know you're both uh, from Berlin. Uh, that, uh, that area, the film has like a real sense of self. Are you, were you familiar with that particular area uh, in Berlin beforehand? I'm not sure what part you're from at this yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> um, Laura. <laughs> it's, um, it's very popular actually, Cottbus is um, like a, re yeah, it's kind of rough and dirty, but on the other hand, it's very hip as well, you know, it's always very strange when... My language. You're talking my language, you're saying rough and dirty and hip, I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you sister. Yeah, yeah. And, but, but yeah, you know Cottbus is just yeah, it's the center of Kreuzberg. It's the center of the area I was um, born and raised, and I spent a lot of a lot of time in my youth there. And still, I like this place. It's a crazy mixture of of, of um, yeah, people, of people, cultures, people, and everything. Yeah, everything. Also, for me, in like my youth like when i was 16 it was always the place where we met like before we went out because it's like somewhere everyone could come to and it doesn't matter what time during the day or during the night you go there there's always people there's always something happening and yeah it's it's a really special place uh it's on my hit list and i think i'm just gonna put it out there now ladies that i no, I've now got two holiday homes after lockdown where I can come and stay with you because we all obviously got the same fashion sense. So clearly we can share wardrobes. I'll bring one suitcase, one fit, it's all, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> uh, you mentioned earlier uh, about the um, sort of about the, the film premiere and, and, and the, the Berlin, Berlin Ali uh, and, and the reaction that you got from, from, the, um, from the audience there and, and afterwards. What's it like when, you know, you've, you've wrapped a film and, and it's done, and I know you'll be experienced in this, but what's it like then when you are at these premieres and you're seeing yourself on the big screen? What's that thing like? Are you, because many actors will, will often say, people that I've interviewed previously, you know, like, oh, I, just, I don't want to look, or are you cruel, are you kind? Is it a mixed feeling? How is it for you? With this movie, I felt really comfortable. I love to watch the others and I love to watch the story and um, it's not, it's actually it's very rarely, it's not very often that you can relate that much to, to the work you did. Yeah, for me it's the same. I was yeah. never so like proud um, to show something like and just to let people see it. I think we all watched it like before for ourselves, just kind of to get to know what, what Leonie did, but then to see it with people on a big screen and just to see their reactions. And it's also so cool because the movie, like in cinema, it's so special. It starts smaller and then it opens the frame while you watch it. And it has such beautiful music and I think it's such a really a cinema movie. So yeah, and you near at the Berlinale was yeah. Yeah, you just fall into the movie. Yeah. Yeah, oh. you absolutely do. Yeah. You, you you really do. But listen, I want to ask. This is a question. I do my burning question to you. I hear that what you're saying, but what about when you're in the packed room in the cinema and you're at the front row and then. How comfortable are you when your kissing scenes come on or your naked scenes? Because we all know that, uh, you know, 
Uh, Romney loved a bit of getting naked, didn't she? Any opportunity it seemed in that film uh, that she, <laughs> naked, she was naked. Uh, what's that like for you on screen? Are you a bit like at the cinema, like, yes, it's me, it's me? Or is it just like, you know, oh, it, what, what's your thoughts on that? How does it feel at the time? Uh, I mean, being naked always must fit into the story, you know? I would never ever just be like, yeah, look at me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's not the way I am. But I think it fit to, to Romy, it fit to Romy to just be comfortable with her body. And so it was very logical that she, that yeah, that when you go swimming in a lake, you do this naked, it's real life. And um, so in this case, I didn't have a problem with seeing, seeing me naked because also I think the framings are beautiful, the pictures are beautiful, the scenery is beautiful. And it's the first time of falling in love, the first time of being naked, kissing each other. And yeah, for those things, you have to be naked, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, you're very, it's very true, it's very true. And I totally get it. And this is, again, is why it brings it to life, really, doesn't it? And the way it's shot, it just makes it more realistic in, in, yeah. you know, in the lake, in the, in the woods. It, that's, that's what you've got to go and do. Um, Oh, you're making me want to come out of lockdown a lot quicker now, honestly. <laughs> Find the nearest lake. <laughs> yeah, my friend, she, she goes uh, swimming in the lake every Sunday. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. It's so cold outside. Oh, that would get the blood circulating in your veins, wouldn't it? There you go. It would get it, would get it going. Um, you're both experienced actors. Um, I know you've been in many other previous films, but, but how did you actually get into acting initially? Um, I started when I was uh, 13, kind of by accident, because a friend of my mother had an um, agency, and then I just went to like a few castings, and then one of them worked out and then I had my first role in a small cinema movie and then I really liked it and kept going. Um, yeah, and then, I don't know, it just kind of happened. And then, and then here we are, here we are with the same yeah. talk. <laughs> what about you, Jenna? Um, I, um, I I knew that I wanted to become an actress and um, I had a friend and she told me about an agency and that they are doing, that they have a casting call. And so I guess I was 15. So I went there and I did a casting and um, I wanted to, yeah, get into this agency in order to make castings to, to shoot movies. And um, that worked out. Yeah, and we're still in the same agency. Yeah, true. Shout out to our agent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. So you really like oh, you like besties, really, in a lot of ways. <laughs> 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 right now, right now. <laughs> uh, so we've got a question that's come in that I'm going to read out here. Um, a question from George. The music in the film is so fun. What was the soundtrack to your summer? Uh, if you could call the 2020 a summer at all. So I don't know if it's going to be a soundtrack for this year, but what would be your soundtrack to your summer? For me, I, so it was a real, it was really important for me, or it was, it was a great gift that Alice Phoebe Lou would uh, um, lead, lead us or would give the, the song She to us. And Alice Phoebe Lou is, She's a musician from South, South Africa and she moved to Berlin and she got known by playing on the street and um, she performs this song soundtrack, she, in the movie. And for me, this song is the ultimate summer song. Fabulous. What about yourself, Lena? How, what, what's your um, soundtrack of your summer? I mean, of this summer, it's kind of hard because it was such a <laughs> such a different summer. Um, <laughs> this summer, <laughs> but uh, I rediscover. I mean, rediscovered uh, 
uh, Fleetwood Mac. And um, that's something that's just bringing me up all the time when, like even now in winter, it's just always brings you joy. Yeah, absolutely. I love a bit of Fleetwood Mac. And also the thing with Fleetwood Mac I always find is that they're always, the song will come on the radio wherever you hear it and you're like, oh, I know that song. I love that song. Who sings that song? Yeah. And then always ends up being Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. <laughs> always, always great. So look, not only good stress sense, but both of you have good, good sound of music. So I, I, I'm really excited about this. Um, we're coming towards the end of this fabulous interview and you know I can always chat to you for, for as long as long as we can allow but I, I want to ask a question very quickly um, you're both clearly fabulous actors and that you know that shines through not just in this film but in previous films but if you could play anybody who would be your ultimate character? I mean I can't really say because I have to read a book and then it has to catch me and then it can be from, I don't know, being historical to being a super agent to, it just has to be an interesting character for me and um, ideally something I can relate to, but that also maybe like scares me or excites me a little bit. So it's kind of, yeah, it always has to be something new. Um, so there's not one person I would like to play. It's just, they just have to be interesting and catch me. Yeah, okay, great, interesting. What about you, Jella? I'd like to play a really evil person, like the, the badass, the, I don't know, how do you say Bösewicht? Sensky? Uh, I don't know, the, the mean one in a fairy tale? How do you call them? Yeah, the mean one in James Bond, the mean one, you know, the... Oh, just the your villains, villains. So the villains. Yeah. The bad guy, the villains, or the bad person, sorry, the baddies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you've got to have a little bit of a meanie in there sometimes. The meaner, the better. <laughs> and again, I'm sorry to bring it up, but we are so dressed right for these villains. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Crazy. We're getting in there, we're getting in there. <laughs> So, so what can people um, expect? What's coming up next? I know we've been in lockdown uh, and obviously that's all been just, well, it, it goes without saying what lockdown's been like in the pandemic. What's coming up for you? Are you working on any projects at the moment or anything that we can look forward to in, in the future, 2021? Uh, I shot the third season of our Netflix show, How to Sell Drugs Online Fast this summer. So hopefully that comes out next year. Um, yeah, and then another German movie, but I don't know when that's coming out internationally. <laughs> yeah. And you can come to Berlin and see me play at a Volksbühne. It's a, it's a theater in Berlin, but um, there's also a movie which will be released in March, but you don't know whether the cinemas will be open at that time again or not so it's not really clear but it's a movie about Thomas Brasch and he was a very well-known writer who flew flee, flew from from the eastern part of Berlin to the west part with um, his wife and girlfriend and I play Katharina Thalbach and yeah it's a and your plan, and that's going to be that's in Berlin. That's that's where you'll be performing that. Yeah, fabulous. So that's good for me to know again because now I have got my holiday home. You can book me a ticket, and I will be there. You just let me know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love how I'm just inviting myself along. Yeah, with you, yeah that's very good. <laughs> you can't. No one's going to invite me otherwise. I've just got to like put myself out there. Come on, uh, people. I would just like to uh, to let you know also that. You can actually find more about where the film is being shown, uh, where Cocoon is being shown on www.cocoonfilm.co.uk. So if you haven't had an opportunity to see it already, make sure that you get out there and you do see it because it is a fantastic film. And as I say, even though there is a lesbian love story in there, anyone I feel can relate to it. as a teenager. If you was ever a teenager once, there's a bit of something in there. For you. Um, I'd love to uh, chat and switch to you for, for much longer as I said ladies but I just want to say thank you so much for joining us at the Dingba interviews. Uh, it's like honestly social media just went crazy when we were posting about this and everyone's been so excited. Me, me especially 
uh, being so excited to, to chat with you both today. Um, but thank you for, for having us. And, and to you out there, viewers, I would just like to say again, please give a warm cyber clap, clap, clap as loud as you can for Jella Haza and Lena Lenka on Cocoon. Woo -hoo, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, look, you've got your clap up. There we go. <laughs> Loving the clap. Um, and before you go, uh, Diva viewers, I would just like to say that we all know that lockdown has been very difficult and on a serious note it has really been very difficult for very many people uh, so we must remember that but in these times of lockdown where we have to think about others and and how we can keep our spirits up I would like to say that if you haven't got it already please make sure that you do sign up for your diva magazine copy have you seen this ladies the fact site this is guaranteed to put a smile on anyone's face especially mine uh, so yes, sign up and subscribe to get your Diva magazine through the post. Um, Diva interviews will be coming uh, again, so do keep an eye out for them. And I'd like to give a shout out, because if I don't, she might not talk to me again. But it all started, of course, with the Riley interviews. So please, everyone, give your love also to Linda Riley, who started up the Riley Interviews Facebook community, publisher of Diva Magazine. Um, and I'm sending my love of Saski to you and I expect to see you again very soon online. So look after yourself in the meantime. But ladies, once again, thank you for joining us. Congratulations with the film Cocoon. It it's, seriously is a great watch. And um, yeah, I'll be spreading the love and I'll be coming to visit you both soon and um, the holiday home in Germany. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Take care of yourself. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye bye, Diva community, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Check out myself, Char Bailey, and the fabulous Melanie Ricky for more interviews coming soon, and we will catch you then. Peace out. Bye bye.